What is the word accountability? When you hear that, what do you think of? Well, for me, uh, being accountable to yourself is is huge. So, so like what I was saying earlier about um, believing what you say is so important. The belief, your self belief, and your belief in yourself really starts with the fact that if you tell yourself you're going to do something and you don't do it, it starts eating away, right, on your self worth and your self belief about. You know, can you get this done? And it has nothing to do. I'm going to say everybody's capable. Every single person is capable of doing what they set forward to do. All of it. But we get in our own way. And so accountability is teaching you to be like, wait a minute. I said I was going to do this. I've got to show up. I've got to show up for myself. Right? It's like you can't lead if you're not leading yourself. Right? And I say this often. When you're a parent, like, well, you know, a lot of my clients will say, I'm not a leader. I don't want to be a leader. It's not about that. Is you're a parent, you are a leader. You have to look at yourself in that role, right? And you cannot be that parental leader if you can't even lead yourself. It's by example. You know, my daughter threw at me the other day. It was hilarious. I was talking to her about something and um, she said, you know, mom, I don't really want to talk about that right now because I just want to be in the moment. And you're the one who always talks about how being in the moment is so important. And that's what you do. So why can't I do that? And I'm like, oh, you're so right. And actually, I was really proud of her, even though I kind of wanted to probe and know more. I was like, you know what? I got to take that on the chin because I realize. (laughs) I get it. I get it. They're going to throw it at you. But (laughs) well, better that. But better mm-hmm. that she's throwing something like that. And it's so 100% true. So again, leading yourself. Okay, that's a topic in itself. But breaking it down to that accountability, as you asked earlier, um, is, is really like being cognizant of that is saying, what can I achieve, right? It's the same thing as saying, what am I good at? And being honest and saying, all right, let me start like, with something I know I am good at. It's the same thing as setting a goal or what you need to achieve or what you need to do. Don't go crazy. Don't sit there and say, I'm totally going to be fine with this situation. In a month's time, I'm going to be totally over it. I've heard people say that. Well, in two months time, I'll be ready to date. In three months time, I'm going to be over this uh, relationship. I was like, well, then why would you want to set yourself up for, you know, a failure? It's horrible. You shouldn't even put a timeline on all those things, but you should, you could start on saying, you know what, I'm going to write my journal and today I'm going to take account that, you know, in this week, how do I feel at the end of the week? Let's see. I'm excited to do that. I'm going to write for five minutes a day Mm -hmm. and look back at it and see where I've come from, from the beginning of the week to the end of the week. And that's good. That's accountability, right? On my growth, on my, you know, how I feel about myself or I've got about 10 billion phone calls to make, but I'm going to start with one. And if I can get one done today, I'm pretty happy about that. Right. Or many cases of my clients, like you've got, you know, paperwork work up the yin yang to do for, (laughs) for Mm -hmm. divorce. Right. And it's like, okay, let's hold accountability to myself. I, if I get the first page done of one of the forms, I'm going to be proud of myself. So let me give, give myself the end of the day to mm. do that one page. And mm. God, by the way, I guarantee you'll do more than one page if you tell yourself that. And then you're in a win situation. And then you feel good about yourself. All of this stuff and accountability is super important, but it's also holding yourself accountable for your own feelings. Wow. Okay. okay. So it, that sounds so deep. <laughs> it, it is that was deeper. pretty good. It is, it is deeper. You know, there's one thing about actions that we, you know, set forth to do, right? And accomplishments and goals and things that we need to do and to do, the to-do list. But it's also about your feelings, right? Like how many times, you know, do I hear the blame on the other person? You know, the other person's making me feel this way. The other person's doing these things. I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel because they're blocking me. Hmm. So we're giving power to someone else. Now, is that holding yourself accountable? I don't think so. Because no one should have the power, right, to 
shift how you feel because if they have that power, then they won. Then they won and you're not holding yourself accountable because I'm telling you there's no one else who can make you feel that way except you. You have a choice. And I think that what I like to say is like when I'm going through my day and trust me, there are things that will fly in, you know, in front of me or trigger me or something happens. And I'm like, well, I got to be accountable for my reactions, my thoughts and my feelings, my actions, reactions, all of it. Right. So that's me. I've got to be accountable for that. And so I can let that hurt me. I can let it derail me. I can let it do all that. Or I can make a choice to not to do that and say, hmm, let me be curious. What can I learn from this? What can I do? How can I pivot? How can I think differently? You know, that's that's being accountable to yourself and your emotions. That's uh, that's very powerful, uh, what you've laid out uh, to uh, to stitch together, to sew together resilience, resiliency, self-talk, and accountability, mm-hmm. and even to the point of getting us to understand that we need to be accountable for our feelings. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to throw something your way now. <laughs> Bonus clip time. Mm-hmm. Bonus clip time. Here we go. I'm going to throw this out to you. We're going to throw this out to you for the bonus section here. I'm going to say this to you and tell me uh, if it sounds familiar. It should because uh, you came up with it. (laughs) So here we go. I'm looking at a posting that you made. Uh, This posting was made, uh, it looks like a few days ago, if not uh, soon. It says, um, it's about, uh, it's your two cents Tuesday. Mm. It's a two cents Tuesday post that you had when you get triggered. Mm. It says, get curious. Yes. So again, it's a two cents Tuesday post that you made on your Instagram Mm -hmm. entitled when you get triggered, get curious. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that? Uh, So, um, you know, we tend to react to our triggers very fast. And we don't even know where they're coming from, what they're doing. And it becomes that thing that has happened or what someone said. Uh, we start just looking at it that and blaming that for our reaction. Get curious means, wait a minute, put some pause on that and see really where it's coming from. Understand it, dissect it a little bit. Like, hmm, what was that? What was about that phrase or that you know thing that has happened or that letter that's come you know, in my email box, what was, what, what in that is that made, you know, that made me feel that way? And what am I actually feeling? Right? Because a lot of times we get triggered and we don't even understand and reactive and we don't even understand what we're feeling about it. And if it's even a reality, right? Is it a threat? I don't know if it's a threat. It could just be emptiness. I mean, I don't, you know, when, especially again, going back to what I do, and who I work with, a lot of people going through divorce and separation are getting inundated with lawyer letters or letters from the ex or whoever, family members who are trying to tell them what to do. I mean, there's so many things that are coming at them that it's like, but wait a minute, those are just tries. People are trying to get you in a reactive state, Mm -hmm. especially a lawyer, that's a technique, right? And so get curious is like, well, what in all of that is actually true? Is any of it true? You know, find out. Be like, but wait a minute, there's no truth to that because you know your truth. It's understanding, it's calming yourself down enough to be like, oh, wait a minute. Actually, none of this really makes any sense because none of it is really that true. And, or if there is truth to it, what part of that is triggering you and why and how are you getting triggered? So curiosity is just dissecting it, unraveling it, understanding it a little bit more before you let it take over your emotion. Let it take over your life and your actions, by the way. (laughs) 